Well, my pots have arrived. Greetings, the Astro 30 here, and welcome to part four of this mixer preamplifier project. Um, today, I'm going to be making the there's a drill press there. Today, I'm going to be making the um, input stage PCB. I've already got that routed out. I just thought I would uh, present the finalised schematic for that uh, circuit. There is more circuitry over here for the actual mixer preamps uh, and tone control stage but it's uh, not presented here for it's not relevant so here's one input stage uh, the 47k mixing resistor here and there's three others down below here joined to here to form the mixer um, so it's pretty much the same as the first video nothing much has changed uh, We've got the RF1, CF1 values here, which are all marked out on a separate table, uh, which is not going to be presented in this video because, again, that's not really relevant until the entire project is finished. Um, and I've still got to adjust a bit of the gain here and there on some of the uh, inputs like guitar and microphone, etc., because I'm still not 100% happy that the line is louder than the <laughs> others. So I've got to work those out. Uh, a little bit better before I proceed. So we've got an input socket here and I'm going to be using these type of uh, input sockets that you find on guitar amps and such and these are going to be mounted to a separate PCB under the input board PCB. I'll show you that on another diagram in a minute. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And uh, yeah these are relatively cheap. They're only like about two three bucks so I'm going to be using those uh, so that's represented by this input socket and one pin which is this pin here is taken to ground which is over there uh, so that when you unplug your plug it grounds that input out or shorts it to, to ground so uh, you're not picking up any stray noise through the wiring etc so that's the idea for that, um, and goes for a 10k log pot, and these are the ones from Alltronics that I've got. They've got the 18 tooth splines on them, uh, they're very, very nice, and I've got some knobs to put on it, not the right ones, but some anyway for this demonstration. Um, I thought I put some screw nuts on that, obviously I didn't. Anyway, so I've got four of these, plus another one for the masterboard. Uh, but I only need four for the input board and I've just thrown it on the desk. So after the mixing resistors here and up there and down there we're going through two connectors. One's a mix in which comes off of another preamp board like this so you're actually joining another set of 47k resistors to the first and then that can cascade down to as many boards as you want limited by power supply current and of course a mix out and they're basically physically joined anyway so it's for all intents and purposes it doesn't matter where the output is taken from whether it's from J5 or J6 it'll, it'll still work exactly the same up here is the power supply decoupling got our input connector here J7 going through two 100 microfarad capacitors uh, for bulk filtering earth form there and these two 100 nanofarads and it says U1, U2 this one would go as close to the body of uh, the first IC U1 as possible and the same as this one would go close to the body of U2. So here's my overlay diagram printed out in larger format so it's easier to see A on camera and B for when I'm assembling it. There is a little bit of a change down here where this link wire is. I've extended that out over to in line with that one so that's not really relevant anymore but for my purposes today it's it's going to serve the purpose it needs to and I've also added more grounding uh, planes here in the spaces that uh, aren't present on this overlay but it's it's not relatively important and what I mean by that is here is a printout of the PCB 
as viewed from the top and as you can see there's a lot of ground plane area here and that's an attempt to keep the noise to minimum by providing um, a ground plane area close to signal paths the same as if you had shielded cable there so this is the first input stage which comprises of two input stages input uh, one is down here and input two is up there and there's the two inputs for there but each circuit is basically identical and is also identical over on this side so I only need to show this side and as we can see there's one of those 100 nanofarad uh, supply bypassing capacitors and as you can see it's very close to the body of the IC and that is to help prevent this IC from going into high frequency oscillation uh, via uh, noise on the uh, supply lines and that's the, uh, the whole reason why we do that because um, otherwise we can end up with a very noisy output on the scope um, and uh, here's the two pots down here two 10Ks and there's uh, another two 10Ks and you've got your two 47K mixing resistors there two there and they're all physically joined at the ends which then go into the mix out and mix in pins respectively and down here next to RV4 we may see there's this extra hole here and I haven't actually shown it on this overlay diagram um, just to keep clarity here but what that is for is what we would do is we take a piece of tin copper wire connect it to there run it along the front across the top of the pots all four of them and we would solder them to the bodies of the pots and so effectively what we're doing is we're grounding the outside metal edge this body of the, uh, the body of the potentiometer to ground so that should help minimize any noise picked up and induced into the circuit by touching the metalwork with your fingers um, I mean my design I'm going to be using plastic knobs but assume for the sake of argument we have metal knobs on here like aluminium ones well that's going to transfer the noise in through the aluminium knob the aluminium knob is going to act like an antenna it's going to pick up any noise from the capacitance in your fingers and it's going to inject it into the op amp circuits making it uh, buzz slightly when you're turning the volume up and down so that wire is supposed to help that a it's physically connected to the ground point and also the pots themselves would be grounded to the case via the front panel but we're not relying directly on the front panel to ground the pots because that may not provide a good ground point there may be a slight uh, resistance there like um, higher than zero ohms so this is what that wire is for and you'll find it on a lot of circuits and in guitar amps and stuff like that is that's for that very reason is to try and minimize the noise picked up by the shafts of the pots when you're actually touching them moving on to the last part of this before I actually go and manufacture the damn thing down here we've got our input board where all of these uh, input sockets are mounted to so there's one two three four there and four connectors so we have four of these two-way connectors with short length of uh, shielded wire connected to another plug at the other end which then plugs into the relevant socket up here uh, just to join the two boards together and I do have a hole around about here and here in the PCB where a 25 millimeter long um, M3 tapped spacer would go so you could screw the two boards together now the idea of that is to stop this top board because we're only using single gang pots here from flexing back and forth on the solder joints of this pot making the board come up and down like laterally like that and so that's an attempt to stop that by mount, attaching it to this board via a spacer because these mount to the front panel and they have a larger surface area so this bottom board should not move as much as this top board would so that's the idea of that and we'll see that when I've um, manufactured the boards unfortunately I forgot to buy the spacers so I'm not going to be connecting them together today that way but so that's the uh, circuit board uh, layouts for the two 
um, circuit boards. I can't even think where I'm going. I'm just checking the measurement of this uh, input socket compared to the pads on the board, and it looks like it'll fit just nicely. Um, they are probably slightly bent, which might be the reason why. If I straighten them, they may fit more accurately. Which they do, so my measurements are pretty good. So what I've got to do is I've got to print this out now on a clear acetate and cut out a piece of PCB material to expose it onto, expose it, etch it, drill it, cut it, protect it, and then assemble it. So the next shot you'll see is hopefully the finished PCBs, which is going to take me at least a couple of hours of time. So I better get cracking. And about two hours later, here they are. Both boards have been made and they're ready for assembly. By the way, there's me mounting hole for the standoff that's 25 millimeters long, which I don't have. Three millimeter screw through there. And then when it's uh, brought up to the, there's the other hole there. Uh, helps to put the board the right way around too. See that you sort of get a standoff like that, something like that. You'll see when I actually do the thing uh, what I mean. All right, so I'm just waiting for my soldering iron to warm up and be ready to use. Just lost this DDS. Uh, so let's see how we're going here. Oh yeah, it's ready to solder. Okay, so I've got four input jacks and four of these sodding. Um, header pins that I hate, but I still use them because they're convenient. So I'm going to start by installing the four header pins and the other board I will film in time lapse going together. I think I got the gains on the uh, resistors and stuff worked out correctly now, so I don't have to worry too much about messing about with that too much now. So I'm just going to tack each one of these in, just to get it started, and make sure that they're all straight, etc. before finalising the soldering. So, yeah, see that's not really straight. So I can then fix that by doing that. And there we go, there's the uh, input jack board completely assembled. So, um, and they all look relatively flush. So, uh, this board will sit on top of that one. Sort of like that arrangement with the pot sticking out the top. These will line up with the centre of the pots. And uh, I worked it out to be roughly 40 millimetre between the centre of the input connector and the centre of the pot. So that makes it nice and easy. And the actual distances between here are supposed to be 30 mil but my printer is slightly out so it might be like 30.5 between each of these pots so by the time you get to over here you're like 31.5 um, anyway and I've just still just got enough room to get the connector in there that's that's wonderful so anyway I'm going to break for lunch probably now and I'm going to start work on assembling this PCB. Um, the hardest part about manufacturing PCBs is drilling all the sodding holes. Just saying. So anyway, that's the next step. Moving on.
Okay, well that's the assembly uh, complete of the board apart from the potentiometers. Now I left them to last because, well, I've got to prep them. I've got to file off the top of the uh, pot just a little so solder will take to it. And I've got to also remove the locator pins um, on the edge of the pot because they're no longer needed. But for now, I'll install these two any double 532s into their new homes. Uh, that's one. And two. I think this was uh, out of a kit somewhere. Don't need it anymore. Um, okay, so it's uh, those large 63 volt caps just fit. So that's all right. So what I'll do now is I'll mark my positive input and I'll also mark the negative post just so we don't get confused. And whilst I've uh, got it handy, I'll just install some little bits of uh, link wire here off cuts of components just to make the power connections to this circuit board a little bit easier. Now I'm going to have to make up also four audio cables to go from this board to that board, pain in the ass, and one just to have flyer leads coming out of here to make it easier to connect to I'm going to connect it up to the summing amplifier on the breadboard uh, just so we can test it. So that's going to be a pain in my ass doing those um, sodding connectors. Still don't have the right crimping tool. But first, I'm going to move on to the pots. So I need to get them out. One. I did notice that I'm going to probably need a washer on the inside of this before going up to the power just to space it out a little. But that'll come later. So just get rid of each of these uh, locating tabs on each pot because they're not needed. I've probably shown this before, but I'm going to do it again. I'm going to take a small round file like this. Seems perfect at this point in time. I'm just going to gently mar the surface of the top of the pot there. I don't know if I can do this like this, but I'll try. And that's basically what I've got to do to each pot so we can get a link wire attached to it. So that's the next step. Okay, with all four of them done, I can place them in the PCB in their holes, solder them home. Now, I wonder if I'm good enough. Yes, I am. <laughs> uh, so I'll start with the center pin so I can just maneuver them if I have to do things like that because when I solder them you want to get them standing up straight so you don't have to bend the pins to make them straight we'll try and get it as straight as possible I mean that's wonky as buggery but yeah won't take much to just like carefully straighten them it's a lot easier when there's only like one pin soldered but from now on I've got to be very careful not to put too much strain on that. That's uh, all pretty good, I think. Right, so the next step to do is to take our tin copper wire and I might do it this way. So we start at the end pot does tend to sometimes help to tin the end of the wire a little bit more just to help make it take and then braving the heat that's going up the pin the wire attach it to the pot now I would advise using pliers to do this but I've been doing this so long that the heat from 
going up wires and stuff doesn't bother me that much. That didn't work out as well as I wanted it to. That was hot. Bugger off. Get off the board. You prick. Thank you. And that's basically what we do all the way along. Try not to pull on the wire because you may pull on the end of the other pot. And you don't want to have any tension on this wire really. All that's there to serve is to ground the body of the pots. Shouldn't have to do any more than that. Shouldn't have to like, you know, add any more solder than that. So I'm just going to guess the length on these, which is about that. Because then it's got to now poke through the provided hole in the PCB. That's a pair of side cutters, they're not going to do anything. So the easiest way is to carefully curl this around. Guide it up to where the hole is. Push it through. And give it a slight pull and a wiggle. That's good enough, doesn't have to be any tighter than that. Don't want to make it too tight. Now we solder it. And that should mean now the body of the pots is earthed or grounded to well the zero volt. So I can confirm that. And well lose everything on the floor because everything's tangled up. God damn. You want to do something simple, you can't. I don't even know what I've done with the Uh, I don't even know what I've done with the uh, little end caps now. They seem to have disappeared. Alright, for some reason I've lost the probe ends, the uh, little plugs, caps that went on the end of this. These probes, they seem to have buggered off somewhere, but anyway, it doesn't matter. They weren't that of importance, but they are now missing. So anyway, doing a continuity check. Yeah, okay, so if I go from there, we're zeroed. The uh, splines are zeroed. Right, and that's the whole entire point. So, I know that that is all grounded as it should be. So I can move on to the next thing, which is wiring the sodding connectors there. Which will take at least another hour because they're a pain in the ass. Um, but first, I'm going to look for my knobs because I had two, four knobs here the other day. Um, they're not the right colours, but they'll do for at least giving me some form of uh, indication as to where these pots are ro uh, pointing. Hmm, can't even talk now. So, just these uh, knobs. So, that just slides on nicely. Same as this one. They can slide on a little bit loose because it means it's easier getting them back off again. Uh, I'll use red for my microphone input. I haven't explained that yet. I will in just a second when I get this last knob on. Okay, don't want to push them all the way. They've got to come back off again anyway. So, what we've got here is we've got a line input CD player, so that's the first channel. The next two channels are guitar inputs of around 250 millivolts. Uh, and this end one here is for microphone. So I've got line, two guitars, and a mic. That's what I've chosen to go with. I mean, as I said, it's versatile. You can choose whatever you want for the uh, feedback networks there, but that's the um, ones that I've chosen and gone with. And I haven't installed that last connector there for the mix in because I don't need it. Just need one for out. So, I need to grab some connectors and some wire. 
and get thoroughly pissed off for the next hour and a half and do the cables. The cables from here to the input board need to be no longer than about 10 centimeters each so that makes it even more difficult. Anyway we'll come back when I've actually got that part done. Well that was a bloody doddle and a piece of piss, well not really, but I've got them done an hour and a half later. I don't quite need this board with its wires yet, because what would be prudent would be to actually hook this up to a power supply and oscilloscope on the output and test each of these inputs individually to see whether or not well, it's working as it should and producing an output. So it's 2 volt for the line, 250 millivolt for each of the guitars and about 3 to 10 millivolt for the microphone so that's what the values for the uh, amplitude that I'm going to work on keep in mind that when we look at the microphone one the waveform is going to look like absolute shit because of how much noise it gets to down at that level alright I've got everything uh, hooked up my power supply is still on roughly 15 volt plus minus i just back that off a little high. Got the oscilloscope at an angle but yeah I could probably actually fix that you know by just um, putting it up with pliers. Well didn't really help much. Okay turn the load on. Yeah I don't see anything on the uh, oscilloscope and there's no unusual current draw. I've got the DDS hooked up using this DSO lead to the first channel which is the 2 volt channel. Oh yes, I can actually see an output. We're on 2 volt per division. So, there we go. So that's the output at 1.12 volt roughly. That's because of the 4.7, uh, the 4.7, the 47k resistor in the, the mixing. If I was to actually move my output to the 4, the uh, 47k if I could get it to go on there and stay on there might not be able to but I'll just do it this way way too much there on the scope so getting about 4.3 volt peak to peak out before the mixing resistor which is perfectly fine. Alright, so that input is working, so I can move on to the next one, so I'll turn that one back down. And this next one is the guitar input, and I put him at about 250 millivolt. So I'll change my amplitude to 250 uh, millivolt. We're actually getting a little bit more out of the guitar input, about 1.3 volt peak to peak as opposed to 1.12. Yeah, that's, that's average enough. I think that should have sufficient enough gain. So whilst we're here, I'll just swap to the second guitar input and see if we get the same output swing. So I'll turn the knob up. And yep, 1.31. One, that's actually a little bit higher. That's tolerances of resistors. That's, that's what you get. So I know that that input is working. So now I can hook it up to the microphone input and I've got to change my amplitude yet again to 3 millivolt and it's going to be noisy but we'll see what happens. So I'll turn the knob up. Yeah, it's amplifying and we're getting noise and we're getting about 0.75 volt peak to peak so but we're at the noise floor DDS is pretty bad so yeah we're, we're getting 4 volt odd out on that channel now that's only because it's like more than what should be in going into it but it's reasonable so we can assume that that channel is working okay so now what I'm going to do is turn that off is I'm going to hook up the input board I'm also going to hook the output board up to the breadboard the power amplifier and speaker and then we're just going to play around with it and see if it actually does what it's supposed to do okay got everything hooked up I think so uh, we're going to ignore these two pots because they're no longer relevant 
see if we get any strange noises. No. All well and good. Okay, I'm just going to grab a microphone and plug it into the mic input here and see what we get. So I got the microphone hooked up. Testing, 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 testing. We've got no output. Well, that's interesting. So I don't know what's going on here, but we've got no output. Um, I can probably see why. Um, here's the output wire here. I forgotten to actually connect it to the fucking circuit. That might help. Okay. Testing. 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 Suck my cock. Suck my cock. Suck my cock. Suck my cock. Yes. That happens to be working. As for how much gain it has. Oh, well. Yeah, that seems alright. Mm. It's not that noisy either. But I, I am going to be picking up a bit of noise from this wire. That's okay. Um, that gain structure might change yet because that is quite set quite high but um, the master is not quite at center so stick it in center uh, yeah okay that's working so turn that input down I'm just going to plug my bass into one of these two inputs and see what happens okay well the uh, guitar lead is plugged in but not into a guitar yet which one am I in the second one okay Plug it into the base. Okay, let me change to the Second input, there's less noise now that it's on a circuit board. Isn't that interesting? Um, so I'll just uh, change this to the next one along. Like so. Right. Yes, that channel is working. Nice. Sounds alright. Need an equaliser. And I'll probably find that I will have to increase the gain of the summing amplifier to uh, 3.1 to compensate for the levels. But also don't forget the power amp's not operating at its correct voltage either. So, uh, now, next thing to test would be the line input, which is going to be a bit of a bugger considering that uh, I need to go from RCA to 6.5 and I don't have one of those adapters. So I'm going to have to come up with a solution somehow. Okay, I think I've solved that. I've got a RCA jack here plugged into the cable coming off the CD player connected to the end of this 3.5mm plug which is plugged into here. So, hopefully I've got the connections right on the RCA jack. Okay, let's give it a bit of volume. And I'll find out what I did with the remote. <coughs> hopefully I don't get hit for copyright for this. Right, well we got no audio. <laughs> Okay, I better not play any more of that because that is copyright. 
Um, I had my grounding wrong because these are only mono connectors so they don't go all the way to the end of the shank here so you won't get a ground. That would be why. Um, and also this uh, input connector was connected crook, 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 uh, cross-eyed. Cro uh, crooked. I, uh, I got a stutter now. Wahey! Bastard. Right, okay, now, um, I think it's disc three. Um, all right. Disc two. Whoa, yeah, no thanks. Uh, disc four. that uh, PCB at the front end is working marvellously. Um, I think the uh, CD player line level might have a little bit too much gain but then again don't forget we're working with 2 volt peak to peak here. <coughs> Other line devices such as synthesizers have their own volume control anyway so it's not too big of a, a deal there. So I'm pretty sure I've got my values worked out correctly for the gain structures for each type of device. So I'm going to rewrite the table up properly and then um, append it to the finished schematic which will be available in the last part of this series when we actually look at the uh, output section on PCB. So that's what this is ready for next. But there's a lot less noise now being picked up especially on the guitar inputs because everything's using shielded cable and we're using a PCB which has been routed correctly with ground planes in mind. Anyhow I'm going to leave this video here and I hope you enjoyed it. Please remember as always to comment, rate and subscribe below and you can always follow me on Facebook and Twitter, the links are in the description as usual. Anyway this is the Astro 30 saying see ya, happy mixing.